Hello there, it's Belinda from the Chateau Kitchen. Lee, what does it smell of in here? Tomatoes. Aha! Now there's a clue as to what um, today's Chateau Kitchen vlog is going to be all about. So those of you who've watched our films would have seen us talking about tomatoes for months now. We started with two tomatoes which we chopped up. They were about, they were quite large ones, weren't they Lee? A bit bigger than that probably. Yeah. And we sliced two tomatoes and then we we potted the slices in small pots of earth soil and they germinated and we ended up with hundreds, hundreds of tomato plants. And we now have ended up with what we thought we'd end up with, which is a glut of tomatoes. Yeah. As to the smell of the tomatoes in this kitchen, I'll come back to that a bit later on. I'm going to hide that there. Um, I have promised all the way along that I would show some ways, try and show some ways of tackling this enormous amount of tomatoes. And actually I have got one new way, which I'm really excited about. Uh, one well-established way that I've done a lot of and I'll show you how to make today and lots of ideas for what to do with tomatoes coming up oh, in a bit. There was someone wrote in and asked if you could show how you made your tomato soup. Yes, well, I'm going to do that today. Great. And yes. also, I have to say, I've noticed there's a new gadget appeared on the table. Um, what can I do to cover this? I've got a tea towel. I um, think you should turn it around so anyway, I can't I'll see I'll hide it. that for the yeah. time being so you can't see that. There we are. But you can smell it, Lee, and you can hear it whirring away gently in the I've background. I've not seen Very that before, gently. Belinda. Very gently. I'll show you that later. And I can't remember when I was out and you've smuggled that back in. I'm now prepared to talk about this thing that's on the table to my left here. Yes, tell us about that well, well, thing the, on the, the table things, in the corner there. One of the things that did occur to me when dealing with a massive glut of tomatoes was how I was going to store them in a, in a, in a smaller, the smallest amount of space possible. Because, um, so I'm going to admit something here, I've actually got four freezers. Can you believe that? I've got one, I've got a larder freezer, which is a, as big as this fridge freezer behind me, which is all freezer. I have got this half of this fridge freezer. I have another half of a fridge freezer and I have another freezer, which is about this size. And every one of them is almost full. You're and that's giving nearly, me freezer envy here. But that's nearly you? always the way, isn't it, Lee? I'm very, very good at filling freezers. And I thought I need a way of storing these, preserving the tomatoes, storing the tomatoes in a smaller way. And by chance, by luck, some friends of ours who um, ha are longer in the tooth with storing fruit and vegetables and preserving them suggested that I looked into buying a dehydrator. I hope to just explain to anyone watching the film, there's a flickering display at the bottom. It's actually not flickering. Shall I move it? Um, yeah, I think it's, it's the camera's picking it up as a, a So I'll turn that display. around. There's lots and lots of little trays and things. Yeah, I'm going to come back to that later. Oh, OK. Yeah. Right. But first of all, I am going to go through my roasted tomato soup, which has become an absolute staple. I yeah. started making this last year when we had about, ooh, one twentieth of the tomatoes that we have this year. So this year I've made an awful lot more of it. It's Again, it's one of those recipes, I don't need to look it up. I've made it so many times, I know exactly what the ingredients are. Uh, and I thought I'd show you. It's a great recipe. This is a roasted tomato soup, so I'm going to roast the tomatoes and other ingredients in the oven. I've already switched the oven on, so it's preheated to 180, 190, 200 degrees. You'll know your own ovens and you'll know um, you know where you need to set the temperature basically so I've already weighed out uh, one and a half kilos of tomatoes let me take off those lovely fresh herbs I've started slicing tomatoes up to roast in the oven so one tip I have just only learnt myself when slicing tomatoes and you want to take the skins off is to slice it through the stalk end like that and I'll show you why in a minute uh, believe me, it will make your life so much easier when you're taking off the skins. Um, I only wish I hadn't waited till this great age to find out. But there you are. You great age? Say. Surely not, darling. You live and learn. Surely not a great age. <laughs> Greater age than I was yesterday. I've nearly finished chopping up these tomatoes now. Um, there are very few ingredients. Lovely and simple, easy to remember, as I've said. 
one and a half kilos of, I mean, you can make half this quantity, obviously. You could make um, 750 grams of tomatoes and halve the ingredients. But as you all know, I'm into bulk cooking here. Ideally, you really want to roast them in one really layer. It looks really fresh. It smells it's lovely, lovely, doesn't it? Yeah, it really does. Um, yeah, I'm having to double up because this is, roasting tray is not quite big enough, but they'll, they'll be fine. And what's the and next then, step? So the next step is, um, I've got some garlic here. I'm just going to slice it quite thickly. So I don't want it to burn and just, just pop it on a couple of tomatoes. So four cloves, quite good cloves of garlic and a couple of um, chopped onions. You can use red onions, that's nice. Red onions are very expensive in France, actually. They're not, they're not the sort of common or garden ingredient that I was familiar with in the UK. They are a bit more pricey, so I don't use them quite as much. Use them in salads, really, more than anything. So white onions are fine. So um, just a couple of chopped onions. Again, try not to get them too round the edges because anything round the edge is likely to burn a bit more quickly. And you don't want burnt onions. You want roasted flavour, not burnt flavour in this. Okay, that's fine. And then um, some salt and pepper. Just got some ground black pepper there. It's quite a good seasoning, this, um, this soup flavour. Stuck. Why do things always go wrong for me? Hold on. That's because it's empty, everybody. I've added some salt. You will add some more salt later to taste, but I have put some on to roast. I found another pepper mill, which is almost empty. Note to self, buy more pepper. So yeah, give it a good grinding of pepper. Again, you're going to season it a bit more later. And then we're going to add four tablespoons of olive oil and just drizzle it over. So it's not too much because you don't, you don't want a terribly oily result at the end. An oily, oily, oily soup wouldn't be very Nobody delicious. likes anything oily, believe Oily, me. oily, no. That's three, and just one more. And then I'm going to put this in the oven for about 40 minutes. Ha! We're going to have the oven experience again. Every time you use this oven, it becomes a, a bit of a major Should we see what we thing. can do this time? Let's see what we can do with the oven. The unique heel toe technique. <laughs> Voila! Ooh la la! Right, I've set that at about 190. And that, yeah, about 40 minutes. The tomatoes have been in for 40 minutes and I can smell they're cooked. So let me just get those out without tripping over this stick. Now, this is the tricky bit. Whenever we've. We always know this is tricky, this bit. Yes, because the trays get stuck on the Arga hinges. <laughs> Smells good. Yeah, look, perfect. Oh, let's have a look. Ooh, show, show the camera so oh, oh yeah that's lovely okay so we need those to leave those to cool down now for a while because okay. i don't want to i want to take the skins off but they're far too hot to handle at the moment tomatoes really retain heat actually so i'm just going to leave those over there to cool down i can't wait for you to start telling us about this gadget you've got that's just over there that's my next denouement so now to my new gadget, which I purchased recently. Lee says he knows nothing about it, but there we are. So this is a dehydrator. Uh, I've never had one before, and I'm really glad to have discovered this new piece of kitchen kit, because I think it's going to become extremely useful here with all the produce that we've got in the garden. So what I've done, um, I've actually started to dry some tomatoes and I will show you i've got a couple of empty trays there which i'm going to fill up in a minute oh, let's see what, what, so hang on a minute so what, what's happening you've got oh there's like so multiple trays in yeah, there yeah it's got several trays oh okay and the nearer they are to the source actually so the, the better they're drying so i tend to put the newly cut ones at the bottom um but you can some of them are ready so that's just like a great heater with a fan on it. It's, and it blows it's just it's hot like air a, up. It's like a very low fan oven, basically. I mean, you can do this in the oven, and obviously you can do these. You can do these uh, in the sun. 
you can dry tomatoes in the sun. That's what. Oh, it's the same as sun dried tomatoes. Same as sun dried tomatoes, except oh, I'm not okay. drying them in the sun. Does that mean you're going to put oil and garlic and put them in I'm a jar? I'm going to. What I'm going to do? Yes, I'm going to actually put some in olive oil with garlic and herbs oh, and I preserve love them. Those. Fresh crusty bread. So, sun dried tomatoes delicious and all you do it's simple so what i've discovered is cut off the ends because hang actually on. they inhibit the drying process can you see no hang on you're gonna have to i'm gonna zoom in and let me let me see so what you've done is so cut, cut off the ends i'm going to actually cut this one into four slices i've done some experimenting and i've chopped tomatoes into quarters and into bigger chunks and i've discovered that this size of slice is about right for a good result because so, the trouble is if they take too long to dry they start to go moldy how thick is that slicer oh goodness i don't know let me have a look um that's about 10 sure. millimeters there we are. So, 10 millimeter thick slices so I'm just gonna take the blame me if it goes wrong top, top and bottom off like that and cut this these large tomatoes into about four and do you know, just look at these tomatoes. These have been grown organically. They're the ones from our garden. Totally. There is no pesticides, absolutely nothing, but the good fresh air, uh, sunshine, water, and we grew basil in amongst the tomatoes, which we were told deters pests. And it seems to have done the trick. And I will be using some of that delicious basil in my recipe in a moment with some uh, sun-dried air dried tomatoes with a bit of luck we're going to have our grandson come and join us Very shortly soon. and i bet he's one pest that basil won't deter <laughs> from picking the tomato but it, seriously actually do you know what he might like because these dried tomatoes they're like sweeties they're so yeah this the flavor is so concentrated and delicious i'll show you some that I've or you could do fruit with that it. Well, we, I did some fruit. Actually, I brought it over to show everybody. I've actually, we actually dried some damsons. Let me just oh, pop right. those on, Lee. Where was I when all this was going on? I'm going then? to put those at the bottom. How long have you had this machine, Oh, Brenda? not long, a week or so. I never saw that come into the house. And then what I'm going to do with some of these that are already done, uh, here we go. Look at this jar full. Sorry, Lee, this was your cherry gin jar. Don't mind me using your jars, no, do I you? No, I don't, no. With some trial and error, I've actually discovered um, the point at which these tomatoes are ready. Uh, so basically, you don't want any wet on them. You really want them to be dry. There, there's a good one. It's like a crisp, basically. And you can, well, you can hear, you can hear it's like a crisp. Rattle so that, these are all two obviously around clean again. hands with everything. Yeah. They're all crispy. And you say you've done this with damsons as well? I'll show you in a minute. When did yeah. you do that then? A couple of weeks ago. When oh, we I thought given... you'd only had it a week. <clears throat> anyway. Uh, oh, look, there's one. That's done. Hang on a minute. I'm, I'm detecting a cunning plan that's come there's together one. before I even knew about it. I'm not saying too much. Uh... Yes. Maybe now's the time I can anyway. slip in a prompt for my But gym. there's a few. You can see that's the sort of thing you're looking for. And then I've got a jar full of those there as well so in a moment i'm going to for the first time i've never done it before i'm going to make some dried tomatoes preserved tomatoes in olive oil with some herbs the other day i dried some damsons just for a trial this was the first thing i dried so if you see that's how they started out life have you noticed listeners and viewers it's gone from two weeks ago to just the other day and that's how they hmm. ended up i'm a bit suspicious and in fact, I made some scones with these. Can you put one of those um, air dried ones on the plate so we can see the difference? Oh, it's quite a, quite a big Well, one. that's half the one there. But I've got quite a lot of them here. Look, I've made quite a lot. Mm. But I need to make so sure what? I preserve these correctly. Blimey, how long have you been doing that for then? Mm. They don't, well, you just keep, keep filling the dehydrator up and they'll, they'll just go overnight. So I'm going to use these in place of dried fruit. So like raisins or sultanas or anything that's dry. I've got little dried plums. This, these are hot, sorry, they're sterilized. I don't know why I did that. Um, I'm going to try, well, I've never made these before. And I found a recipe that, I, that looks really interesting, which uses garlic and fresh basil and dried oregano with the tomatoes and olive oil. So I'm going to make that one first. And, and it just says to, um, 
to wash your hands and they're exceptionally clean. Okay, I'll wash my hands yet again. I'm going to put uh, just a layer of the tomatoes in the bottom of this sterilised jar, like that. And then I'm going to put some salt. I don't have a teaspoon, I'll just use my fingers. A bit of salt like that. Uh, garlic, a little bit of crushed garlic. Because it goes in layers. Crushed garlic. Pinch of dried oregano. A uh, layer of fresh basil leaves. So I'm going to repeat that and I will see you when that jar's full up. Just finishing filling this jar, just going to put a final layer of the tomatoes on top. It looks so pretty. <coughs> just press it down because you, you've got to make sure they're compressed because um, you can see there, so I tried the little quarters there, but I do prefer the slices. I think they're going to be better and they certainly dry more quickly than the slices. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to put a little final sprinkling of oregano and a tiny bit of salt over the top like that and I'm going to fill it with olive oil. What sort of olive oil is that? It's just a uh, vierge extra, extra virgin olive oil. Cold press. So you can see this is not an inexpensive <laughs> dish to make, preserve to make. Because olive oil isn't cheap, but it's going to be, I hope, extra special. Absolutely it's a delicious. Crusty bread and a glass of chilled white wine. Oh, and some lovely um, cheese or some lovely salami. Saucisson. What am I talking Saucy about? Saucy salami, I'm in France. Saucisson. Let's fill this up and make sure that the tomatoes are absolutely covered. Looking good. Look at that. So you're just tamping down the top now. Just yeah, you want to make sure that the tomatoes are absolutely covered with the olive oil. And then I'm going to go and fetch the sterilised lids. I've got a hot um, sterile lid there. I'm going to pop on the, oh, the jar's not hot, is it? No. I was thinking I was putting very hot jam, but it's okay. And that's it. Oh, yeah. So, Let's have a look. That looks a thing of beauty, doesn't it? It does, actually, yeah. Spin it round, just turn it it's round. It's really attractive. Yeah. Oh, you could take that. You know, when Isn't you get beautiful? invited to friends' houses. Do we ever get invited to friends' houses? We haven't got any friends, Lee. <laughs> <laughs> we've got time for friends that's the trouble no, i'm joking of course we've got lots of friends it's a great idea right i'm gonna get my justice out i'm gonna try one so you've easier. not tried these yet have you no I've not. i'm afraid i've eaten an awful lot there. as i've said before they are a bit like sweeties so you can't stop eating them they're so delicious oh gee the flavor full of flavor mm. It's intense. And I think with the tomatoes, I think you already thought... That is really intense. They weren't great, but I think like that, they're better than ever, aren't they? You could just have them like that in a sandwich, couldn't mm, you? Mm. I'm having a bit of basil as well. All right. Mmm. <laughs> I'm going to make this batch a bit differently from that one with the basil and the garlic and the oregano. And this time I'm going to use... Rosemary and Thyme, there's a song there somewhere, don't sing it Lee. There's a TV show there somewhere. Anyway, um, I'm going to use the sprigs from the garden of the, the woodier herbs, the, the um, uh, rosemary and the thyme, in with these tomatoes. I'm not going to use garlic or oregano. So these are the dried tomatoes. I'm just going to shake a few, take a few in my washed hands, in there like that. A little bit of salt, I'm just going to layer them up with salt. And if I push the herbs, I'm just wondering whether I could... Oh, I see you're using see whole sprigs this time. I'm going to time. use the sprigs because I think they're going to look... Oh, that'll look fantastic. So pretty. You know, sometimes when you go on holiday, you see those yeah. jars with fruit all stacked in them on shelves and that in delis and that. <laughs> I've got more tomatoes drying, so I'll pop some more in later when they're ready. But just for now, just to show the difference with the jars. So I'm going to fill this with the olive oil. That looks really nice. It does, doesn't it? Looks very pretty. 
Um, it's a bit dark, I think. I'll see if I can get down a bit. Just see if I can push push the tomatoes into it like that. There we are. That's about right, isn't it? They're all submerged for now. Yeah. And then top it out when you've got more. And then put this lid is um, clean and sterile. I've just done that. And there we are. Two different types of preserved tomatoes. Can you hold them up because they're in oil. their own shadow? There. Yeah. We're just zooming on. Well, we could do a taste test on those when they're when they're ready, can't we? Yeah. Back to the roasted tomato soup. The tomatoes have cooled down signif um, significantly now, so I can take the skins off. Uh, it's not it's not a difficult job at all once you've roasted them. The skins are literally hanging off anyway. So I'm just just going to pull them out like that. And you'll see, put the skins in another container. It's quite easy for them to come off. If you've cut if you've cut the tomato with the stalk through the through the middle of the stalk, it makes it so much easier just to take the skin off like that. So I'll see you in a short while, it won't take me very long, I'll just whip through this really quickly. I've taken all the skins off the tomatoes now, and those are the skins, and some of you might be surprised at what I'm going to do next. I'm going to squeeze the skins out, because there's so much juice and flavour still left in those. I've got very clean hands, I've just rinsed them, I promise you. So I'm just going to take those, you'll be amazed at what comes out and how much flavour I'm going to need a plate for these now to put these skins on or that pan behind you if you could pass it to me. Look at that, that's where all As the flavour is. As if by magic, a pan appears. So I'm just going to finish these off. Look at that. It's a terrible noise. Yeah, but the, the concentrated flavour, again, in a similar way that we've, um, for those, I um, keep wanting to call them sun dry, they're not sun dries at all, they're air dried. Air -dried tomatoes um it's the concentration of the flavor and the roasting tuning from the on the sound <laughs> voila i've got a bit of freshly chopped basil there about a couple of tablespoons of freshly chopped basil i'm just going to pop that in together with the tomato mixture and the next thing is all of it is going to go into the food processor which is here we we'll just get and whizzed we'll get, up get into the noisy bit now um whizzed up together you could use a um what are they call them those uh, things on the ends of sticks lee that were around that uh, you put into soup stick blender stick blender yeah. that's what i'm trying to think do I've you mean in, stick blender Belinda? i've been in france too long lee and i sometimes seriously i do struggle with the english words for things now and I can't, then I can't think of the word sword in either language, which is just what happens to me then. <laughs> so um, all these tomatoes, all that lovely juice, the basil, the onions, the garlic, salt, pepper, olive oil, all going in the food processor and I will whiz that through and I will see you in a diet. I've processed the tomato mixture. I've left it quite chunky still because that's the way I like it. You could make it a lot smoother. You could sieve this, you could put this through a moolie. So you kind of like your soup like you like your men. Chunky. Well, yeah. oh Lee, that's a <laughs> sweet way of describing your figure. Um, do you know what, you could also, I'm going to make soup with this today, but you could just use that as a pasta sauce. My food process is slightly broken, so I'm going to take that bit off. Pop it in the saucepan. I'll get the rest of that with the spatula later. It's lovely. It's so lovely. I've got a litre of um, vegetable stock here. So I use these quick flash. These are really good stock cubes. I think they're fantastic. Yeah, I've used two of those. Get them over here in France. Good bouillon cubes. Bouillon. Yeah. So litre of stock. And that, for me, that makes a really, really good, well-flavoured tomato soup. I'm going to heat it up again on the hob. 
and I'm going to serve Lee up a portion in just a moment. The roasted tomato soup's finished now. I just popped it onto the hob. So all those roasted tomatoes and the onions and the garlic and all the juices and the olive oil that came with the roasting into the processor, whizzed it through, put it in the saucepan with a litre of good quality vegetable stock. So I'm just going to serve up a portion for Lee because this is one of his favourites. How just else would I portion, dare please. make it? That's it, that's good. A tiny bit, there we are. And I'm going to, I need some basil just to garnish. A little bit of chopped um, fresh basil. This is what we do when we're here when we serve it at table, isn't it Lee? Yeah. We serve it exactly like that. Lee is going to taste the tomato soup. I must admit this is a favourite, I like mm -hmm. it. There we go. Absolute thumbs up for that. It's, yeah. So to my mind, it's really, you get the, the total flavour of the tomato. It's just so Needs fresh. Needs crusty bread. Mm. Sorry mate, this is just an interim. Tomatoes, tomatoes, tomatoes. The tomato soup's finished. There's plenty more where that came from. We've, what we've made today, so we made the, the roasted tomato soup. We've made the preserved dried tomatoes in olive oil. Uh, I just wanted to just make a point about these preserves. I have found out something that I wasn't aware of about olives, olive oil and tomatoes and garlic. Now I always preserve everything in a very sterile environment. I always sterilise my jars. Obviously I'm always washing my hands and I'm using everything that's clean. Just to reiterate, I think that's really important. So as a bit of a disclaimer, if you've got any concerns, just maybe do a bit of research on that. I've never poisoned anybody. Everything, everything was sterilised, even totally, if you haven't seen totally. it on this floor. Um, and I just wanted to show you, that <clears throat> these are three preserves actually that I've made in different years. I found this one in my cupboard going back to 2016. Oh, it's vintage. Well, do you know what? It looks, if you look at that, I don't know if you can see that on the camera, Lee, it's perfectly I'm good to get this. I'm getting and fresh. Can you see the top of there? So there's no taint or mould. It's perfectly good. That is actually nearly four years old. That was a green tomato chutney I made. I found in my cupboard, I found this chilli jam that's made with minced uh, tomatoes. And that's actually I made two years ago and I'll be making some more of that. That's nearly run out now. I didn't make any last year. And then last year I made tomato jam. Evidently, this is absolutely delicious with goat's cheese, which is probably why it's still here because um, neither of us can bear goat's cheese but I need to remember to serve this. Apparently it's a great delicacy. So that's it, that's tomatoes for today. There are plenty more where those came from. I've still got to think of ways to use them up and I've got these sorts of challenges now on their way. <laughs> this looks more like a <laughs> It looks bat. like a club. Do you know, I think Fred, Flint, Fred Flintstone and Barney well, Bubble <laughs> could have done very well with this, Lee. Where did you get that from? <laughs> from your garden. <laughs> I shan't be sleeping safe be tonight. Be very proud. <laughs> <laughs> it's a get a bonk over the egg with it. <laughs> Hope you've enjoyed uh, another episode of my chateau kitchen and uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to be showing you next time. Something else from the garden I'm sure. Take care for now. Thanks for watching. Yeah, thanks, thanks for, for watching. subscribing. And we'll see you again very soon. It's Bye goodbye from, from her and, and goodbye from him. And Fred Flintstone. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>